uh, in the interview with Rock Bottom. John Corabi, the singer of the Dead Daisies. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Nice to hear you. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great. The first and everlasting question, how is the run of your Euro European tour? It's been great. Um, we've done a lot of festivals. Um, we did Sweden Rock, Hellfest, um, Rock in Vienna, Download, uh, Grass Pop. So we did all the big festivals. Um, and we, we've done some club shows in between headlining. Yeah. And um, it's been awesome. All the shows have been great attendance. The audience has been incredibly enthusiastic about the music. So it's been really cool. Very and cool. You play some uh, unplugged gigs in between. Today you unplugged gig at the Hard Rock, Hard Rock Cafe and tomorrow you will play at the Harley Festival. So if you play an unplugged show, do you have to reduce yourself? Is it a hard task to rearrange your songs? Uh, not, no, not much. To be honest with you, um, there's a few where we do maybe just take a little piece out or add something, <laughs> but um, we don't really change them that much. And, and we actually enjoy doing them. We've done a few now. Um, I think this hard rock. Um, this is probably our third acoustic show that we've done there. We just like doing it. You know what I mean. So, um, and the, and the hard rock here has always been very cool with us. Uh, so, um, the the cool thing about it is is we do, you know, maybe a one hour acoustic set. And we do some signing for the fans, and then we get to eat. <laughs> you know, so it's cool. It's cool. Yes, of course. And which songs have got the best re response from the audience? It's it. You know, it's funny. It's it's. Um, they're all getting a great response. You know what I mean? It's. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where, if you're like a real Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin fanatic, like. Yeah, if they yeah. play any song, you're going to go, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And our fans are kind of like that. So um, it, it, it's been really cool. I, I, I can't even put into words like mm -hmm. how enthusiastic the fans have been, yeah. uh, you know, uh, on, on the last couple of runs that we've done. But it's I, we can see it growing, like the enthusiasm, uh, yeah. the attendance. It's all getting, uh, it, it's really starting to grow. So it's, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah interesting to hear and you will play on the Woodstock Poland Festival with an orchestra on the 3rd of August so who, who had this idea for this interesting collaboration I honestly I think it was um, you know maybe our manager and the promoter uh, last year we, we did the Woodstock Festival last year yeah. and um, we got an amazing response from everybody um, we did our join together video there and then we just released another video for uh, a song called you and i uh, that yeah, was yeah. also filmed there so we used pieces of the woodstock festival but um we had a great turnout last year and the promoter actually loved the band mm -hmm. so i don't know if our management approached them or they approached our manager but yeah. they asked us to um They asked us to come back again and close one of the nights. Um, and they wanted us to learn a couple of extra songs, uh, like some cover songs mm -hmm. that had something to do with uh, peace, a positive message, you know, about, you know, peace or a better planet, better, you know, people living together in harmony, you know, and. So we learned a few songs, and, and then they, they came back and they said they'd like us to do it with uh, a 60-piece symphony orchestra. <laughs> That's great. So I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. A lot of bands don't get to do that. So, um, you know, we're going to finish this tour here now in York. We go to Japan yeah. in a couple of weeks, and then from Japan to South America. Yeah, yeah. And then we have a couple of days off, and then we come back here to Poland, and we're going to rehearse with the orchestra, oh, yeah. and then we're going to do the show. 
Yeah. So it should be cool. Yeah. I saw your time schedule or touring schedule is the hard task um, from country to country, from continent to continent. Is it a straining task? How would you see it? it? it for, for me, as a singer, obviously one of the biggest things of being uh, consistent is sleep. Yeah. So <laughs> going from Europe... I mean, I'm already, I'm already uh, seven hours ahead uh, yeah. uh, from where I live. I live in Nashville, so I'm seven hours ahead of my time zone. Oh, yeah. And then I go another, I think, 13 hours ahead or some crazy whatever. Uh, so we're, we're jumping yeah. ahead even more. And then we come back to... Uh, South America, which is on the oh. same time zone as where I live, <laughs> and then we come back to Poland again. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a little weird. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a little hard. Yes, and yeah, you have released the live CD, Life and Louder lately. So it's full of love and good vibrations. Where's the source for this positive vibe? What, what's, where do you find your energy? What's, where's the source? You know, uh, honestly, I think, um, you know, when we, when we play, um, the band is really just five really good friends um, that are very much into the same era mm -hmm. of classic rock. Um, you know, mid '60s to yeah. 1980 or a little later, and um, you know, we don't take ourselves all that serious, but we're just, you know, honestly, we're just so grateful to still be. It's very hard in the music industry, so we're just. I know me personally, I'm just grateful to be here. I've been doing this for 30 years now, mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. it's there's not too many people that can say that they've been doing this for 30 or 40 years and consistent, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just happy to be here. So when we get on stage, we just, we're just out to have a good time. And I think the audience feeds off of that. I see, I think they see us having fun and uh, I think they feed off of it. And then there's things in the audience like, um, You know, I'll be talking and someone will yell out a song, yeah, yeah. a song title, and I'll just go, no more coffee for you. No more coffee. You know, and I'll, I'll kid with the audience and Doug kids <laughs> with them and Brian and we all do. So um, I, I just, I, I just, it's just, an, you know, for us, it's just natural. You know what I mean? We're just, like I said, we're happy to be here and we're just having fun. Yeah. You know, and and to be honest with you, we're very much like the fans. We're still music fans, so I think on some level, we're them. Mm -hmm. They're us. We're them. You know what of I mean? Course. So it, it yeah. works. It's been working. It's a uh, it's a live CD, but why didn't you release it as a Blu-ray or DVD as well as a real, real concert film? I was just talking to my manager about that and. They said, you know, um, like DVDs nowadays, I mean, with YouTube and uh, you don't really need them. You know, uh, I can, I can, uh, <laughs> you know, I could go and see, uh, I can't, like the Scorpions just played Grass Pop the other day. Yeah, yeah. I could probably go on YouTube and see the concert. and see the entire show that they did. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... I think the whole DVD thing is kind of, um, you know, it's kind of fallen off a little to the oh, wayside. Yeah. But in our in our box set, um, we do have uh, it's double vinyl of the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then we did another vinyl of a radio acoustic thing that we did, and mm -hmm. we just put a bunch of cover songs on it. And uh, there's the CD. And then there is a DVD, but it's more about uh, our travels and us backstage and just fun stuff. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's a good, good DVD. I like it very much. Very interesting. Very much yeah, about your background situation, all that. Yes. And 
you mentioned before, you said it's a good vibration inside of the band, but it's your third album and there were many changes in these five years. Do you think that this band now is a stable lineup and will last for a yeah, longer time and a few albums? What do you think? I, I, I mean, it, you know, David's the one that started this band, our other yeah. guitar player. And, you know, there, there's a little bit of a misconception with the amount of people that have been involved in this. <clears throat> he, he started the band with a guy named John Stevens mm -hmm, in yes. Australia. John is a very popular singer, sang with In, in Excess. It's a great voice. David was in a few popular bands as well mm -hmm. in Australia. And, um, you know, so they got together, they wrote some songs, they went in, they did a record, they used session guys. Yeah. And then they went, they were like, well, let's go on the road, let's do some shows, you know. So they started calling some people, and, you know, there were some scheduling things, uh, you know, some people came in for a few shows and had to leave and go back to their other gig, or... You know, some people didn't get along. No. Um, and I think the, the unfortunate thing is, I always say that, that you know, they kind of did this ass backwards. Instead of having a band and then trying to get a record deal and doing a record that way, like most bands do. Yeah. They did the record first and then, you know. But a lot of the names that are on the list are also just friends of ours who for some reason or another had to fill in for a few shows mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, when we did the Revolution record, uh, Brian couldn't do part of the Kiss tour. Mm -hmm. So we asked Tommy Clofettos from Black Sabbath to do it with us. Um, he's been a longtime friend of all of ours. Mm -hmm. So he came in, and now he's, he's just part of the family. Uh, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, he was not really a member of the band. Brian is, you know what I mean? But Tommy filled in. Yeah. Um, last year before we did, uh, or two years ago, uh, right before we did Australia, Richard was in a motorcycle accident. Richard Fortis was our guitar player, and he couldn't do the whole tour. So we asked a guy named Dave Leslie from mm -hmm. Baby Animals, very short notice, can you do this? He's a very good friend. So he said, yeah, sure. So he jumped in and he did the tour. Now he's a part of the family. Yeah. So a lot of the n names on the list are just friends of ours that filled in uh, yeah. one way or another. <laughs> but I think at this point now, like we've done um, two records with this lineup. We're touring again with this lineup. We're scheduled to go back into the studio on uh, November 1st with this lineup. So barring any health issues or, you uh, know, whatever I, I this is the lineup but this would be my one of my next questions so you are still you are you have enough enough material for the next studio album we've all started we've all started working um, individually mm -hmm. um, Marty Fredrickson produced the last record so he's gonna do the next one as well um, he was in LA recently so he got together with Marco And they, Marco showed him some ideas he had, and Marty uh, yeah. loved them. Then Brian got together with Marty, and he showed him ideas. Marty loved those. And then I live in Nashville. Marty lives in Nashville. So Marty and I got together, and uh, we were just jamming on guitar. And I played him some things on my phone, played him some things on guitar. And uh, he was like, this is great. This is awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so... Uh, um, we've all started David stockpiling. We all we all kind of stockpile ideas. Mm -hmm. Then we get together in one room, all of us with yeah. guitars, and we go, "Well, hey, here's my idea," and everybody adds to it, and we build it. Yeah. Okay, whoosh, next, you know, and and we just get like for the last record, make some noise. I think we had. Uh, 25 ideas mm -hmm. um, and then we got together with Marty and he picked with us you know like okay I think these are the best 12 let's mm -hmm. do these and then um, and then we narrowed it down even more we added a couple cover songs and then that was the record uh, um, 
you know, so it, it'll be the same process. But it's it's very fast though too. That's one of the things about this is probably of all of the bands that I've ever been in. Um, this band is probably as far as doing an album the fastest band that I've yeah, ever been yeah. in. We did Revolution yeah. in 32 days. Literally wrote it, <laughs> recorded it, mixed it, mastered it, and gave it to the record label in 32 days. And then make some noise, same thing, 35 days. Okay. So it's it, it's pre, it's pretty amazing when it's you think about good it. Good for the feeling of the the album. It's good if it's not too long, I guess. Like for example, Def Leppard or other bands. It's a different vibe of music, so it's good, I guess, for the sound of the music if it's a fast record. I. You know, it's it's funny, like all of the great records that we grew up listening to. Yeah. You know, when you look at. Um, you know, Zeppelin one. Yeah. They recorded it in one day. Yeah. Uh, the Beatles would record an album, their earlier records, in a day or two. Yeah. They had the songs, they'd go in, they'd work them up, go into the <laughs> studio, boom, 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 boom. Everybody playing live, which we do the same thing. We go in and we're all, like once the songs are written all together, yeah. then we go, okay, into the studio. And it was, the gear gets set up, and then we go. Brian's on the drums, Marco. Everybody's in the room. I'm in a different room with the mm -hmm. vocal, but I can see everybody. And we just start recording, and we just play. So it's it's the tradition. So old it's old school, way, old yeah, yeah. school way. Normally, it's layer for layer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there are some layers. You know, we'll 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 knock the we'll knock the bass, the drums, and the bed guitars. We'll get those down. Uh -huh. And then, um, you know, if somebody, you know, made a mistake on bass or guitar <laughs> or drum or whatever, you know, uh, they'll go back, listen to everything. I, I want to fix that. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, fix whatever. But while they're doing that, Doug takes the tapes and he goes into one room with a Pro Tools uh, yeah. thing. And then I go into another room with a notepad or my computer, and I just listen to the mu and I just start writing lyrics. Oh, yes. You know, so it's very quick, and you know, so I'll have you know lyrics, and then I'll go in, I show them to Marty, make some changes, and then I sing it. <laughs> Great. And it, it's just, you know, and then I, while I'm doing that, Doug comes in, he goes, oh, I got a guitar solo idea, play <laughs> it. Marty goes, yes or no, let's fix it, whatever. And then that goes, and then he does it. And it's just, it's quick. It's crazy. Great, great, yeah. And you're all very exper experienced musicians. You have played in many bands before. So how important were these previous commitments in other bands for your work as a Dead Daisies? I think, um, I mean, for me, I, I, I think... I think any of the bands that I've ever been in, um, like a marriage or like meeting a girlfriend, you know, you always assume this is the one. Yeah. You know. You know what I mean. When I was in the Scream, I had no idea that in two years I would get a phone call from Motley Crue to join yeah. Motley Crue. And then once I got into Motley and we started recording that record, I had no idea that Vince would come back. I mean, I, there was the possibility, but yeah. I wasn't thinking about it. I, I'm like, oh, this is this is it, you know. And then same with Union, on and on and on. And, you know, but the one thing I think was good about being in all those bands, I, I learned something, uh -huh. uh, whether it's about songwriting or recording or playing live or just life you mm -hmm. know what I mean I learned something from each band that I've actually been able to take from this yeah, band yeah. to that band then this from that you know and um, now you know the other thing is we're all older wiser I uh -huh. hope <laughs> um, you know we're, we're all we're all, 
I don't want to say old guys, but we're I think we're just older and a bit more intelligent. And I know now, um, you know, I have a show tonight. I have a show tomorrow. Yeah. I know now Don't to not stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning yeah. drinking and yeah. running around with girls and, you know, all this other stuff. I need to, I think anybody does. Yeah, you course. learn to pace yourself with anything. You know what I mean? So I, I, I think we've just learned valuable lessons all through, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we've brought it all collectively to the Dead Daisies, and we're making it work. Okay. You know, yeah, so. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It is a difference. You are building up this new band, relatively new band, because it's your own band. So, but in Metal Crew, you were, yeah, it was a very famous established band. So is it a difference for you from the heart coming into an established band or um, is uh, this building up a new band? Is it a difference for you? No, I, you know, because honestly, the one thing that I can say, even in the Scream, um, I'm very adamant about being, I'm very adamant about being who I am. I don't want to be who you want me to be. I have to be myself to be happy. Yeah, yeah. And I've been that way in The Scream. I was mm-hmm. that way in Motley Crue. Yeah. I, even in Motley, I, I was very surprised when I first joined the band that they were actually cool. as open to my ideas and they gave me as much input as they did. Um, so, uh, you know, but for me, it's just, um, I'm just being myself, you know what I mean? So, I, I, don't, I don't think there's really been much difference. I mean, I've had disagreements. When I was in the screen, uh, I remember having a disagreement with the guitar player because he wanted me to, he wanted me to be more on stage like Sebastian Bach or, or, or be more on stage like Vince Neil or whatever. And I'm like, no. Uh, I'm I'm yeah, I'm yeah. who I am. You know what I mean. And if you don't like it, then get another singer. You know, mm-hmm. whatever. But um, and that that I think that attitude has served me well in the long run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. times, I felt like I was shooting myself in the foot. But you know what I mean. At the time, um, and I've had some, I've had some bands that uh, I just felt wasn't right for me. I mean, like, uh, uh, and I wasn't right for, like, the Brides of Destruction, for example. Uh, I, I was in that band, and I just felt like me being a part of that band was doing them no justice, and it wasn't doing me any either. Uh, so yeah. I left. <laughs> um, you know, so it's important to stay yeah. yourself, to yeah. have your own identity. So, and yeah, how do you find the ly- lyrics for the songs? What's your inspiration for the lyrics? I, um, I honestly, life. Life. Just life. Um, but books or movies for like other artists? Sometimes, yeah. uh, you know, I'll read a, I'll read a quote, uh, that I think is amazing. Um, I watch a lot of news. I watch a lot of history stuff. Um, I don't want to say I'm spiritual, but I believe in being good to other people and, Mm -hmm. you know, you get what you give kind of a thing. Um, But, you know, I've been married. This is my third marriage. Oh, yeah. um, I've got two kids. I've dated a bunch of girls in between. Some were cool. Some were crazy. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Um, so I think, I think there's enough. Uh, there's a lot of life around yeah, yeah. where you can you can draw from it. We have a song called uh, on the last record, "Song and a Prayer," yeah. which really wasn't about anybody. But it was inspired by things that I saw on the TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I see things about, um, you know, these young soldiers going over to mm-hmm. the Middle East to fight, or um, you know, and 
some come home, some don't. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, so I wrote a little, you know, song. I, the first story is about a soldier. The second one is about a girl that wants to be a movie star from a yeah. small town. And she gets uh, conned by a, you know, whatever. And then they never see her again. Yeah, you know, yeah. like these are things that I see on the TV, but the story is made up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, um, you know, it's just life. Life, yeah. Yeah, yeah life. Yeah. I mean, there's enough. There's definitely yeah, enough yeah. stuff around going on every day. I'm, I watch the news every day, and I'm like, oh, my God, like, what is the world coming to? Yeah. You know what I mean? There's tons of stuff all the time. Yeah. So. And are there unmentioned things or unasked things, things that you want to put to your fans that are not asked right now? No, I just, honestly, I would like to just, you know, thank everybody for their support. Um, Everybody, it's been incredible. Uh, the last two and a half years that I've been with the Daisies, how much momentum this yeah. band is gaining. Um, and for that, I want to thank everybody. But yeah. um, it's just honestly, and just thank you for the last 30 years. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's been it's been a great ride. So. Yeah. Okay, John. Thank you very much for this nice interview. Thank you.